Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are going to be adding an oil pressure gauge to our 1982 Fiat 124 Spider. Now normally from the factory this did not come with an oil pressure gauge. It just had a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, a clock, and of course your tack and your speedometer. But I want more information on this engine. We freshly rebuilt it and I want to know as much information as possible. So we're going to be adding this oil pressure gauge to where our clock normally sits. Our clock doesn't work. It's missing the trim, it's missing the glass, it's all broken and busted, and it's not doing us any good. So might as well put something in there that's gonna be useful and give us more information about our new engine build. So this should be an easy process. I've got all the parts, all the pieces. Should be done pretty quick, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So these are the pieces we're gonna need. We've got a new part here for our warning light, the adapter that actually plugs here where the oil pressure reader is got the little plug on top as well all brand new sealed parts new pieces nice new copper washers all this good stuff and we're gonna go right into the car it's gonna come right over here and we're gonna start working in a dark spot so I'm gonna light you guys up as best as possible get our light down in here we might have to remove our alternator to make our job a lot easier only one nut here and remove the electrical I'm gonna unplug the battery as well but we're looking right down there that's where our dormy our dummy light is it's just a uh, bolt in there that's got the sensor in it, and we can back that out and add all those pieces on, reattach our wire, and uh, we'll be able to run those new wires in sync with those back through the firewall back into the car. So we're gonna jump in here. I'm gonna disconnect the alternator, disconnect the battery, and take those wires off the back with this boot covering that. That uh, way we don't shock ourselves, and we'll be able to start unscrewing that and putting our new pieces all back on. So what we're going to do first before we get into the car, I'm going to show you how to assemble this. That way, um, when I'm down in the car, you're not kind of struggling to see how it all gets assembled. It's going to be a lot easier on the bench. So the first thing we're going to do is unscrew this bolt here. Take off these copper washers. You can see it's like a banjo bolt in a sort of way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one of these washers on first. These are just crush washers to, to seal it. We're going to put it through the hole here. And then when we go to screw it into the car, we're gonna take another uh, copper washer and that'll go where our current sensor is sitting. So what you do next is you take the dummy light sensor that's gonna go on top and that same thumb screw, bolt thumb screw, however you wanna call it, banjo bolt. And then our big sender, that's actually gonna read the pressure, uh, oil pressure is gonna go on the arm that sticks out. And these all have crush washers on them. They're just not copper. And you, we're gonna tighten those down but this is the basic assembly of how that's gonna go on the car uh, when we remove that dummy light sender because all that's in there right now is just this part here. We, we're adding all of this and we're gonna be running an extra wire from the top of the pressure here to the back of our gauge, um, just up through the firewall and back through the dash. So when I'm down there, this is all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be tightening these down and get this tight first, then this on top. That way this is all sturdy. And then we're gonna tighten down the sender on top of that and then we'll be able to move to the dash and pull the dash off and start running some wires. We've got it installed here. You can see the sender there, and then we've got, I don't know if I'm able to get a good angle, but there's the sender, and we have the boot over the top of the dummy light um, that is down here. You kind of see this yellowy wire, this yellow faded yellow. There's a boot on the end, and it's attached to the, um, maybe it's, there you go. So you can see that there, it's attached, plugged in. Everything is nice and tight, just like we showed on the bench. Um, we'll double check this as soon as we get everything wired up, we'll fire it up and come check for oil leaks because uh, it could need to be tightened up a little bit more. No thread tape, you do not want to put thread tape on this, it'll uh, mess with your reading and it may not have a reading at all. So make sure you don't use thread tape. So we've already got the dummy light plugged in, our next thing is be plugging in a wire for the sender. Now we do not have one already installed on the car, um, it wasn't an add-on um, by the factory. So what we're going to do is run our own wire right up through the loom here, up across with the rest of these wires back and through the firewall right there behind the engine. There's a grommet right here. We're gonna come across through into the car. And it's gonna go right there where our clock is. All we're gonna do is steal the wire for the oil dummy light right there. And we're gonna skip it over to the gauge. And we're gonna use some of the wires that are originally for the clock to power it. Same ground, all this stuff's gonna be really easy. So let's start getting these thumb screws off. We'll get the wheel off, get this all out of the way. I'll get it all pulled out for you guys. And we'll start reattaching wires and getting it working. 
We've got the gauge in the dash. We cleaned up the glass. We took the, the bezel off, cleaned it, and put it back in, just like we did with the rest of the gauges. If you want to know how to do that, I'll put a link up at the top for the video for how we did that and how, and how we got these all clean. But what I've got right now is a bunch of jumpers, and it looks like a bit of a mess. But what I've done is I've taken the original clock bracket. I've added my own hole to it. That way we can secure it to the dash later. It's just kind of hanging there so I don't lose it. But all we're doing is matching color-coded wires and using the original um, colored wires that go to just the dummy light. So down here is our actual light um, for the oil pressure gauge. We just jumped it. There's a gray, uh, solid gray, and then there's a yellow and black. And we tied that into the yellow and black here and the gray there. So those are what's jumped across there so our dummy light will work. And then we've also got constant 12 volts uh, going here. We've got our white and black here tied into the white and black here. And I think that's all of it. Oh, our pink wire on top is our orange wire that we ran from the engine bay. So this is actually coming from that big round sender in the front um, where we just plugged it in. So everything is jumped to where I think it's supposed to go. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put the battery back on and we'll turn the key and see if we get a reading. All right, we've got the battery reconnected and we're gonna be looking right here. You can see our dome light is on. We're gonna be looking right here to see if we can get a reading on the on the scale here. All right, we're sitting down. Okay, nothing shorted out, so here we go. Something is rattling really bad up there. But the good news is we did get a reading. It was just between zero and four bars, which is about uh, 15 to 20 PSI. Um, I think four bars is about 30 PSI. So right in the middle there, 15, 17, um, right in an idle is great. Um, a good rule of thumb is 10 PSI for every thousand RPMs. So if we're idling at a thousand RPMs and we have 17, that means we're well above um, what we need. So the good news is that works. We have it wired correctly. So we can start uh, solidifying these connections, putting connectors on and actually putting them together um, and insulate them, solder them, you know, the super fun stuff. So we're gonna start connecting all these, get this nice tightened up, put the dash back in, see what the heck is rattling up there. Something's probably just loose. Uh, tighten that down so we don't have a rattle anymore. And then uh, we'll start revving it up and see what kind of PSI we're getting as we rev up the engine. So um, I'll bring you guys back when we get that all back together. All right, so we've got our dash reassembled, the steering wheel back on, and all those wires tucked nice and neat behind the dash. Just a little bit of cleanup, not a big deal. But we're gonna attach our battery. We're gonna give it a good fire up and start revving it up and seeing what kind of action we're gonna get. All right, we know our power is on, we got our dome light. All right, good, so our oil light does come on. Looks good, let's give it some gas. We've got some really good oil pressure. Let's check for leaks. I don't see any leaks. Very, very good. Yeah, looking really good. So much better. Well guys, that's just how easy it is to put an oil pressure gauge instead of this junky old clock. Sure, I could rebuild it and get the glass and the bezel and get it working because I could hear it tick when you know it's in the car, when it's got the power, you could hear it rolling around in there, but this just didn't provide anything for us. And now we have a really good gauge on how to measure the health of our engine, especially after a rebuild. It's so much better than just a dummy light. And now we can actually see what we've got. It wasn't very hard, just took some time running that wire up through the firewall, feeding it through, and uh, just matching wires to wires and giving it a good test. Um, and that's it, really easy. The, the gauge matches really, really well. Um, like it really fits in, even though it didn't come with it. 
which is really nice, um, making it look more original but not original at the same time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel, helps us grow, helps us keep cars like this on the road and keep them on the road. Uh, we do still have some merch available. We still have t-shirts and drink sleeves. If you guys want one of those, just shoot me an email at garagetimetv at gmail.com and we'll get you set up with one of those um, and we'll ship it out to you so you can guys can start rocking it like I do. So thank you guys so much and until next time, we'll see ya.